What's up, bro? Professor Denmo back in the classroom. Today I'm going to be teaching you the five best strategies to attract girls. And the great thing about when you're able to attract girls is that you're also able to attract men as friends. You're also able to make more money at your job. And people just want to spend more time with you because all the things that women are attracted to make your life better, which is how it's meant to be. So this video isn't just about getting girls. It's actually about leveling up your life and becoming a better person, which is what attracts the girls, right? Now, with that being said, I have narrowed down five strategies for you to attract girls and also other people into your life. And this isn't necessarily just like a plan or a clever line. This is a long-term choice that you're going to be making because essentially what I'm going to share with you is five different types of man, five archetypes of man. And I advise you to be a little bit of all of them. You don't just have to be one, but one of these you are definitely going to gravitate towards. Think about it this way, bro. Let's say you're playing a video game. Okay. When I was a kid, I played this game called Maple Story. And when you join the game, you're a noob, but you have to decide which class you want to be. You could be a warrior. You could be a wizard. You could be a uh, bow and arrow guy. So the guy that shoots the bow and arrows, I forget what it's called, an archer. Okay. Wizard warrior, archer, and the last one was called a thief. And thieves, basically they used knives and they threw like darts, boomerangs, uh, ninja stars, super cool. Okay. A pretty unique class. That's what I was. I was one of the thieves, but you get to be one of these four different characters. All four of them have their own skills, their own attributes, their own advantages, their own disadvantages. And some players wanted to be a warrior. Some players wanted to be a wizard. The point I'm making is women are the same way. They all like a different archetype of guy. But in particular, if you can combine these five things, then you're going to do really well. Okay. So let's start with the most obvious one. Number one. Okay. And by the way, this isn't in particular order. There's no order here. Number one is not more valuable than five. All right. There's plenty of dudes that aren't necessarily handsome, right? Their face is average, but they're fucking jacked. Okay. So this is physical dominance. This is where you are either, you know, you have a very nice face, so a nice face or muscles. Okay. And sometimes it's actually more than just face and muscles. It's your style because we wear clothes 24 seven. So it's not like you're going to be able to walk around shirtless, picking up girls like that. They're not going to see how ripped you are, bro. So again, style, fashion, a lot of girls like guys that wear suits. They like guys that wear turtlenecks. Sometimes they like guys that have like oversized tees that are a little bit ripped. It depends, right? But the point I'm making is this is where you can dominate physically. And this also applies to you if you're short, because if you're short, you could still be jacked. If you're bald, you could still be jacked. All right. There are so many successful men in the world that are average height, five foot seven, five foot eight. They don't have hair but they're still super attractive, super successful, and they have no problem dating whatsoever. All right. Kevin Hart, very short guy, but guess what? He's not a physical specimen. That's not his thing. Jason Statham, that guy's five foot seven, five foot eight. He's bald, but he still is an absolute Chad, but he's a five foot seven Chad. Okay. So the point I'm making is if you want to play this game, you're going to have to get an amazing physical shape. So you're going to need to put on some muscle mass, cut, the weight, like the body fat to get like a nice body fat, 10 to 15% and then looks maxing. Right. And the reason I say looks maxing is because this benefits everybody else as well. But if this is your thing, right? If you don't have any of the other four things, this is your best bet. Okay. So what would be some other looks maxing skin and hygiene? What else do we got? Face, muscle, style, fashion, obviously like you can do stuff with your hair, right? For me, I can't necessarily grow a beard. So this is the facial hair I rock, but one day, Maybe I decide to buy hair. Okay. I can get a hair transplant and put hair all over this motherfucker. The other thing that you guys have to pay attention to is physical is not necessarily just like being in good shape, but it's your style. All right. So what's an example of a large man? What would his identity be? What would his like character be? Okay. Probably a lumberjack. All right. You think of a dude that goes out into the woods, he chops wood. He's got like a plaid outfit. He wears work boots and he's got a beard and a beanie and he lives in a cabin. Okay. Big, strong lumberjack dude. That makes total sense. You also got the athlete. These are the guys that aren't necessarily the most uh, jacked dudes, but maybe they're a really good marathon runner. They're a fighter. They're a tennis player. 
Look at most tennis players. They're all very, very skinny, but they clean up. Why? Because they are still physically impressive because they're athletic, okay? You could also do like the mob boss look. I know a lot of guys want to do this one where you just get huge and you wear black and sunglasses and you're just looking indoors like this. That's a big one too. But essentially any man can level up his physique and every man should level up their physique. But some guys, they just fit the bill, okay? So if you're a big dude and you're hairy, you'd probably do good as a lumberjack. If you're really athletic, even if you're only 130 pounds, five foot six, lean, body weights, and you're really good at boxing or sports or something like that. And if you have a pretty face, or if you have a good fashion sense, then this is something that is really gonna stand out, okay? Now the second group of people that we're gonna be talking about are people that are wealthy, okay? So wealth means money. Now, why is money attractive? Very simple actually. Money allows you to do what you want. You have time to work on every other aspect of your life. So for example, if you can afford to have a chef or a personal trainer, they can come to your house. So instead of having to like put your gym clothes on, go to the gym, go to the locker room, etc., instead of having to go to the grocery store and buy all these groceries, cook, clean the dishes, you could just pay to have people do that for you. So now something that takes four to five hours only takes you one hour, one and a half. So you have an extra three hours every day. Imagine if you had an extra three to five hours every single day how much better you would be at all the things you wanna get good at. That's the true power of making money, okay? And I didn't realize this till I started making money. I used to think, oh, rich people, they're awful, they must have cheated somebody out of their money, you know, obviously they don't play by the rules. But then I started making a bunch of money and I'm like, wait a second, like, I was a poor guy, I was a construction worker, now I make a lot of money and I understand the way that rich people think because their time is super valuable. And in addition to this, when you're wealthy, you can afford things that show your wealth, okay? Now I'm gonna be very clear here. I don't want you to be one of these guys that thinks that if you buy a nice car or have a mansion and you flex it on Instagram, all of a sudden girls are gonna pay attention to you. The truth is, yes, they absolutely will, but you're attracting the wrong type of woman. So you should never lead with your money, okay? You should never talk about how much money you make. You should never talk about your supercars or you know your mansions or whatever. Unless you're just looking for sex, then yeah, okay, that's fine. But the point I'm making is a lot of guys, they come into money and then they start bragging, showing off, and obviously they attract a girl based on that, but the girl's just using them and they have no idea because they don't understand what attraction is. So they just assume, oh, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Buy, you know, pay for everything and now I have all this money and girls like me. Let me explain how to use it properly, okay? When you're wealthy, you are implied to be rich, okay? Why are you implied? Just the subtleties, okay? If you travel a lot, why do you travel a lot? Because you can afford to. Because maybe you're your own boss or you only work when you feel like it. This means you must have money. You have discretionary income which allows you to travel a lot. And when you travel a lot, you have cool social proof. You got a cool Instagram. And you know what? The truth is you don't necessarily have to be rich to travel or have cool photos of you. However, this is something that you can do when you are wealthy, okay? What's the other thing? You have your own spot, all right? Statistics have shown that the majority of people live with their parents until the age of like 31, 32, especially in the Canada and the United States, like the housing crisis is making everything unaffordable. So it's very common for people to live at home. And there's this huge pressure to get out of your parents' house, have your own place. And when you have your own spot, it is implied that you have your shit together. The only way to actually have your own apartment or your own house means you need a job, you need to be able to show up regularly enough that you get paid a good amount of money because you have a good skill set and you can afford your own place. So, you know, your bedroom's clean, you have a car, you can get to places, and your bathroom is in a total shithole, you don't have loud roommates, you don't live in the loud part of town, right? These are all implied that like, yes, you have your shit together, okay? And again, you have time. When you have time, you can meet more girls. If you're not good at talking to girls, for example, let's say that you're like struggling, you have approach anxiety, you wanna go talk to a girl, but you hesitate every single time and you don't know what to do. If you have money, you can buy a course from somebody that is very good at teaching this. You can get one-on-one -on -one mentorship with somebody that has helped thousands of men solve the same problem. 
And if you're interested in that, I have my paid community in the description below. Just go to the link that says paid. But it's the same thing with getting in physical shape. If you want to lose weight, you can hire a personal trainer. They'll make you a custom, custom nutrition plan, custom workout plan. You can get on daily calls with them so they can actually like be there in person training you. And all of this comes because you have money. So when you have money, you can spend way more time getting better at other stuff, right? So I always get questions like, you know, should I go to the gym first? Should I make money first? Or should I pursue girls first? In my opinion, you should be doing all three at the same time. However, if I had to answer that question to like somebody that wasn't very smart, what I would tell them to do is make money first. And then with that money, invest in personal training and getting mentorship from somebody that's very good at socializing. So like a dating coach or somebody that can help you talk to girls, okay? Because when you have money, you have time. And when you have time, you can invest in stuff, right? Now, the other good thing about being wealthy is you can do cool shit, okay? You can go to exclusive clubs, exclusive restaurants. You don't necessarily have to wait in line because you can just afford to buy entry ahead of time. And you get to meet people that are also wealthy. And what do wealthy people like to do? They like to spend money. They like to hang out. And girls are always attracted to this. Girls will go to a club and there'll be some guys there that have the most money. They have a nice bottle. They have an after party. They rented a hotel. They have a boat, a yacht, whatever. One girl will meet one of their crew. Okay, so let's say there's like a crew of 10 guys. One of those guys will talk to one girl and that girl will bring her other four or five friends. And all of a sudden, now you have like this after party where there's like 20 girls, 15, 20 guys. And even though you're not necessarily the one paying, you get to meet and talk to her friends. Why? Because you're friends with the guy that has money. But how do you become friends with the guy that has money? You make money yourself, right? So there's just so many different ways that making money can help you. But again, should this be your whole personality? No, but a lot of guys focus on money so that they can get girls because of all these reasons, right? This is actually the hack. If you get wealthy, you can pretty much level up in all five of these areas, okay? But with that being said, let's move on from wealthy to the next one. And the next one is becoming famous, okay? So I did a poll the other day and I asked my audience, would you guys want to be famous? And it was overwhelmingly no. Something like 85 to 90% of people said no. And I think this is interesting because it's always people that haven't actually been famous saying this, right? Before I wanted to be famous, I, or before, yeah, before I became famous and I got a large social media following online, I thought, oh, being fame, famous, I don't care about that, that's lame. And then I started to get views on videos, I got subscribers, people started to recognize me in real life, started going viral, started making a bunch of money. Girls were trying to fuck me all the time and I was like, yo, this is great, this is the best, okay? So anybody that tells you being famous is not fun, Maybe now, but at the start, it's the fucking best, okay? Eventually, people make lies about you. They come after you. They want money. They try to use you, etc. You also have to deal with haters, but being famous is actually really awesome. The only people that don't like it are people that are famous, and then they got sick and tired of it, okay? But for an average guy, just becoming famous for like a couple weeks or a month, life-changing shit, bro. It's the most addictive drug there is, I'm telling you, all right? Now, you can make an argument in the comments. Well, I'm different then, Mo. I don't want to be famous. All right, bro, whatever. When you're famous, you have reach, okay? Everybody knows who you are. Because of that, you get special treatments. And here's a big advantage, by the way, of being famous. When you go and talk to a girl, she doesn't know anything about you. So you have to give a strong first impression. You have to go and approach her, shake her hand, have good body language, have a good conversation, you know, walk her through the several steps of like a interaction that leads to you suggesting an activity you guys do together, and then you go on a date right? And then you have sex with her. That is something that a lot of guys struggle with because it's difficult and it takes a while to learn. But how about this, bro? Imagine instead of you having to go and walk over and approach this girl, she looked at you first. She came up and talked to you first. Why would she do that? Because she recognizes you. But why would she recognize you? Because you're famous, okay? So let's give you an example you might understand. Let's say you have a friend and your friend is friends with lots of girls and you're always hanging out with him and he's always hanging out with his friends that are girls. So one day you're walking around, one of those girls comes out and recognizes you. Oh, you're Johnny. Yeah, you're Bob's friend. Hey, what's going on? All of a sudden this girl comes and talks to you. Why? Because she recognizes you. So that's something that definitely happens. I'm sure you've met people before, 
through mutual friends. But when you're famous, it's like that, except it's strangers. Girls know who you are. Girls want to talk to you. And if you're famous for the right reasons, like let's say you're really good at playing a musical instrument, or you're a YouTuber, or you wrote a book and everybody loves the book, they will recognize you, they'll come and talk to you, they'll start a conversation with you. And based on that, now half of the work is done. You don't have to go and find these girls. You don't have to go and cold approach them. They come to you. Now, you might be thinking fame. Okay, what does that mean? Like followers on Instagram? I mean, followers don't necessarily matter. I'd say social media is the best way though, okay? Because if you get recommended on somebody's TikTok algorithm or their Instagram feed or their YouTube feed and you see them a couple of times, if you see them in the street, you're gonna run over and be like, yo, what's up? You're, you're so-and-so, right? And this is one of the reasons most guys become famous because it's really easy to get girls. You get recognized, people want a selfie with you, they want a photo to share their friends. Oh, look who I met, right? And the other aspect of being famous is people buy you stuff, okay? You go to a club, you get free entry, you get access to like the best booth, and sometimes they let you in the DJ pit, they introduce you to the DJs, all the guys that bought bottles, hey, though this, this famous internet guy, he comes in, they treat you like fucking gold. Free drinks, free bottles, free booths, you get to go to the after party because you're high value, you have status. Guys wanna hang out with you, guys wanna learn things from you. They also wanna take selfies with you. And girls see this, wow, everybody's treating this guy really well, why? Oh, is that the guy, oh! Oh my God, he's famous, oh my God. And then all of a sudden they look at you like a rock star. And this is something we saw years ago when the Beatles came out, okay, or Elvis Presley. Look at like any famous celebrity that's like a rapper, YouTuber, etc. They have a lot of people that freak out when they see them. And because of that, you get groupies, okay? Now, if you're just looking for sex, groupies, easiest way to get them is to become famous, okay? But also if you want like a high quality girlfriend long term, what, an advantage being famous is, isn't also like, you don't necessarily want to use your fame to get girls. Okay. Let's say you're getting into a long-term relationship with a girl. Obviously you can date other famous girls because you know, they're going to treat you normal because you're both famous. But the advantage here is when you're famous, you get to meet girls constantly. So all of that experience that you never had before you were famous, you get to go through it super fast. Okay. Let's say before you're famous, you on average went and talked to like one girl per month. Okay. Which is still a lot, right? What if you talked to, I don't know, one girl per day, right? All of a sudden, instead of talking to 12 girls per year, you'd be talking to 365 girls per year. How much better would you get at this if you did it that often? That's my point. When you're famous, you talk to girls a lot, especially attractive girls, so you get used to talking to them. You don't get anxious, you don't get scared. You actually are the one that has the power because they're the ones that notice you and they talk to you. So because of that, it's actually the best position to be in. You could just be chill, laid back, tease them a little bit, and if they are interested in sleeping with you, it's actually pretty easy to get the job done, okay? Now, most people will say, oh, I don't wanna be famous for that, but look, being famous means you're really good at something. It means you're valued. So this is gonna take a long time, just like this. In fact, all of these are gonna take a while. I'd say becoming famous probably takes, let's say two to three years, okay? Can you see that on there? Yeah, two to three years. I'd say becoming wealthy, man, that's a little trickier, guys. Being wealthy probably takes three to seven years. So this is definitely the hardest one. But what's good is once you become wealthy, you can easily get in physical shape. Once you become wealthy, you can become famous, right? You could literally pay some guy to just make content for you and post it under your name. It's beautiful. Physical, this is probably the shortest time. Like if you really want to get fucking ripped, lose a bunch of weight or put on muscle mass, you could do a lot in six to 12 months. So let's just say like, you know, since we're going by year here, we'll go 0.5 to one year, all right? You can make a total transformation in, in a year, all right? So you following along with me now, right? Do you guys understand what I'm getting at? I know that game is important, social skills, et cetera, are important, but these are all the underlying fundamentals, right? You could have the best social skills in the world, but you're in fucking Alaska. So how are you gonna go and meet girls? Well, you make some money and you move somewhere else. You could have the best game in the world, but wouldn't it be great if like, you could apply those social skills to making content online. So that way people would be able to like watch videos. Like for me, I'm a socializer. I'm really good at talking to people. So my job is to talk in front of a camera, make comedy films, make prank videos, make these lectures right here. So because of that, I get to make money, enjoy myself, and at the same time, get followers because of it. So it's like the triple whammy, bro. I highly recommend that as well.
Okay? Now, the next category I want to share with you is called being clever. Now, this one, it's kind of hard to explain, so I hope that I can uh, do a good job here. But this is for you guys that are pretty intelligent, okay? You're maybe extra high IQ. You're really into like reading books, history. You went to university, got like a fancy degree, and you like the finer things in life, okay? I'll give you an example. Most people listen to pop music. Why? Because it's popular. And most people, they're simpletons. But there are amazing artists that only people that like really know what's up actually listen to. And because of that, there's like a class system, you know? People that like are aware of something that others are not, they take others more seriously. And we see this a lot, right? Like fraternities, uh, lawyers, judges, medical professionals, real estate agents at a certain degree, business owners. People are all like, it's like a form of status, but you have to have like a certain intelligence to get there, right? Now, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about, okay? But let's say you are very clever. There's plenty of girls that are into philosophy, they're into history, they're into like specific, obscure things that only an intellectual man would know, right? So when you think of like a clever man, an intellectual man, okay? I'm just imagining a guy with like a cardigan. He's got one of those like uh, Peaky Blinders hats. He's got like a vest and a tie, maybe some glasses. He's sitting there outside a coffee shop smoking a cigar with uh, tobacco that he puts in and, or, you know, a pipe. And he's reading some like obscure book by Freud, okay? Some girls just fucking drip for dudes like that, okay? These smart intellectual dudes. That's why a lot of college professors end up banging their students because you got these dime piece 20 year olds that all of a sudden are into like this 42 year old guy or 50 year old professor. Why? And uh, by the way, I'm not saying that's right, but I'm just saying that like this is the reason that a lot of girls like older guys, okay? Because they have this maturity, this intelligence, you know. Now I put clever here. And the reason I put clever isn't necessarily because of intelligence, all right? Intelligence is a big part of it. But the reason I put clever here is because you can use that intelligence you have as leverage in order to get more leads. And here's what I mean by this. When you're clever, when you're intelligent, you could look at the dating problem as if it's like an economic problem, as if it's a, uh, a mathematic equation. So for example, let's say you wanna get a girlfriend as fast as possible. You work from nine to five, you know, Monday to Friday. So each night you only have about two hours of free time besides going to the gym, besides getting your groceries, cooking, etc. You haven't necessarily achieved wealth yet. So you're like an average guy, you know, nine to five, get home from work at five, right? And then Saturdays and Sundays, you have time off. So you have two days per week to go and socialize with girls and you also have two hours every night to also socialize, okay? So if you're clever, what you do is you strategize. How can I meet as many girls as possible to get this dating problem solved fast? So as an example, strategy. Let's say that today is the first day of the month, okay? For the next 30 days, what I'm going to do is approach as many girls as possible in order to get as many leads as possible, right? So what would an example of a lead be? Let's say I get off work at five o'clock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around the city downtown for one hour each night. And hopefully during that hour, I encounter a couple girls. Let's say on average, you spend two hours per day walking around, okay? If you encounter five girls during that two hours, one of them is potentially going to be into you and give you her number. Let's say you did that every day, okay? So seven days a week. That adds up, what's seven times five? I don't know, 40? <laughs> it's been a while since I did math. Don't roast me in the comments. No, 35, right? Yeah, seven times five is 35, what am I saying? But how about if you did that for an entire month? 30 days and you talk to five girls per day. That's 150 girls you've met. Even if you only get 10% of their numbers, that's 15 girls, right? So this is where the math comes in. Okay, so you've met 15 girls, and of those 15 girls, maybe seven of them text you back. So seven girls text you back. Of the seven that you text back, you go on dates with, I don't know, five of them, and you actually get along with two or three of them, and so you start banging two or three of them. So in one month, you now have two to three girls you're having sex with, and then you just pick one and make her your girlfriend. And the average guy doesn't think about it like that. 
you guys get distracted by stuff so easily. So even something as common sense as this is a massive advantage nowadays, okay? Again, one of the comments I always get, oh, I don't know where to meet girls. Okay, walk around your city. Oh, there's no girls in my city. Make money and move somewhere where there's girls. This isn't rocket science, boys. Holy shit. But anyways, the reason it's clever is because you could get strategic about it. Well, on Saturdays, I assume all the girls that go out to nightclubs that I wouldn't be interested in, they're definitely not waking up early and going to yoga class. They're definitely not going for a run or jog in the morning. So guess what? If I want to meet girls that don't go out to nightclubs, I'm going to go to the park 7, 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Same with Sunday morning. So, okay, where would they be? Well, girls that are athletic, where do they run? They run in the park. They run by the water. They go to the beach with their friends. There's a mall area where a lot of girls go for brunch and they go and get coffee. There's libraries where there's other girls that like reading books and reading books. So instead of going to the gym where the chads are, the girls are going to go to the library because they're interested in books, they're interested in art, etc. And that's where they're going to run into these fucks, okay? With their fucking tobacco pipe and their vest and their tie and their, you know, good taste in literature, right? This is all strategic. It's actually very simple. But because so many guys are stupid or they focus on all these, they totally miss out on this, okay? These guys are very clever. They're very smart. They look at everything like it's an algorithm. And then again, if you have a list of the places you've gone to where you've had successful interactions with women, you just go, oh, okay. So the library is very busy at three o'clock on Sunday. So every Sunday, that's where I'm going to go. Oh, Saturday morning, the parks are dead. There's nobody running. But you know where everybody is? Outside of the restaurant area because they have a special where you can get coffee shop or smoothies, you know, across from the gym. There's a park where people do calisthenics and it's next to the beach. You basically go to all these places and you literally think about it like it's an equation, almost like an engineering issue. You just go, okay, these hours are good. These are how many hours I have per week. And then after that month of just going out every day, you're obviously going to be fucking really good at talking to girls. But in addition to this, you're going to have so many leads generated that essentially you already have a girlfriend in just one month. But for that month, all you focus on is this, okay? So you also have to have like a certain mindset. This takes a lot of work, but this works really good for guys. And it's something that nobody really takes into consideration. Why are smart guys always able to find girls? Well, because they just think about it like it's an engineering equation and then they figure it out, okay? So I'd say this takes, I mean, if we're going by the year average here, not even like a couple months. So like 1.2, like literally 0.2 to 0.4 of a year. So like two to four months, guys, okay? Within two to four months, you'll be able to do that. Now, the fifth and final strategy to attract girls, personally my favorite because it incorporates all of the rest and it has so many added benefits, is being a socializer, okay? Now, if you're new here and you're not familiar with being a socializer, a socializer is somebody that has charisma. They have tremendous social skills. They know how to make you feel good. Their body language is relaxed. They make you laugh at their jokes. They have lots of friends because it's easy to make friends. And because they have lots of friends, they get invited out a lot. So they're always meeting new girls. Socializers have the ability to go and talk to anybody. So if there's an attractive girl, they just go, hey, what's up? How you doing? And they instantly start a conversation without thinking about it, okay? Now, oftentimes socializers get good at this because they grow up around a lot of women. Italians are really good socializers because they have these huge families of like 70, 80 people. Black people are very good at socializing because they also tend to have like more siblings. Us white people, most of us come from like single child households. So we're very introverted and awkward, especially at a young age. We just aren't used to being around as many people. Now, I am generalizing a little bit, but this is just what I've noticed. Like all my friends that are immigrants, they tend to be very good at socializing. But if you are an immigrant, but you don't speak the language, that's a little different, okay? Point is, when you get really good at talking to people, you're always gonna have friends. You're always gonna have girls in your life because girls are attracted to guys that talk. And this is the thing. There's a lot of physical brutes. They got a lot of muscles, but they don't know how to talk, okay? So they're like a fucking boring ass lumberjack. They are good at chopping wood, but they have the personality of a rock. So they might look good, but they can't talk, okay? What about wealthy people? There's plenty of guys that make a bunch of money, but again, they don't have any social skills. They don't know how to talk to people. So they're like these awkward dorks that you see are like always leading with their wallet. The other thing too is once they have money, they think, oh, I don't even need to be in good physical shape. Again, fucking bonehead move. Next, you got famous guys. To be honest, a lot of famous guys, they're very sheltered because since they 
are so able to get like validation from people, they don't actually have to work on their social skills, right? Girls love them because of their music. They don't need game, okay? If you're like a successful rapper, you could be the biggest simp, you could be cringe, awkward, barely talk to girls, like can't even make eye contact. But if you made an amazing album, if you made an amazing piece of art, doesn't matter, girls are still gonna be into you, okay? This is why girls like these guys that like paint their fingernails and they're like this depressed musician that's super skinny and they wear makeup and like they write a song about suicide and shit, but like girls scream from the fences for them. They don't have to have games. So to be honest, if you can become famous, it essentially eclipses everything else because not only do you become wealthy from the fame, but you can hire somebody from the wealth to get you in good physical shape. You can become a socializer because you're constantly talking to people. And in addition to this, you can hire somebody to be clever for you. Most of these celebrities, what they do is they have a guy at concerts that goes to the crowd, finds the most attractive women. And you know, let's say you're a rapper, your name's Johnny, okay? You have a concert, there's a bunch of hot girls, the promoters and the security guards, they put all the hot girls in the front row because it looks good for photos. And then you'll have a guy that's like your, you know, your manager, he'll come and he'll talk to these girls. He'll be like, hey, like, do you guys wanna meet Johnny? Do you wanna come backstage to Johnny's after party? Like, yeah, yeah, cool, okay. And then also he has an NDA, so he has a form that they sign so that they don't make any false allegations against him. Hopefully, they also have a bunch of booze, liquor. But guess what? The famous guy, he doesn't have to do anything. This person sets all this up. This is what all these top celebrities do. And I remember when I started like getting a lot of fame online on the internet and I was doing all these parties and sketchy shit, I would try to get either a consent recording or a signed form because I didn't want to have somebody leak my house address or say I did something that I didn't do for clout. You know, I, there's, there's a lot of things that you deal with when you do become well recognized. I know a lot of like YouTubers who just have a bunch of shit they have to deal with now that they're famous. The point I'm making though is like, when you are famous though, you could hire this guy, you could hire that guy, and you can leverage this to learn that, okay? That probably sounded like the most crazy equation either. But socializers, again, mainly good at talking, also sense of humor, all right? And this is probably the most underrated skill. Pretty much every single girl likes a funny guy. No matter what you look like, if you're funny, you'll be fine. And there's a million examples of this, okay? Bill Burr. Aziz Ansari, Kevin Hart, Cat Williams, all guys that are, you know, average height, if not really short, average looks, if not under, you know, below average looks. Not saying any of these guys are ugly, but the point I'm making is like, they look like an average dude, but they're funny. They know how to make people laugh. They're socializers. Everybody wants to spend time with them. Just think about the funniest person you know. Think about that guy that you love spending time with. He's like your best friend. All your friends love him too. Could be your grandpa, could be your best friend, could be a YouTuber you watch. He's a socializer, bro. People just love spending time with him. And at the end of the day, the only reason people get in good physical shape is so they can spend time with others. The only reason people get famous is so that other people like them. The only reason people get clever is because they're a little bit of a psychopath, you know, these super intelligent, awkward guys. A lot of the clients I work with in my paid community, socializer school, they're guys that are like in their early 30s, they make a fuck ton of money, you know, but they're like, you know, a left brain. They're very like, uh, computer programmer, engineer social skills aren't the best. They're very smart and stuff like this really works with them. So within my course, I have like all these charts I've made that essentially look like engineering diagrams and they really help the smart guys. So if you're an intelligent guy, highly recommend socializer school if you're struggling with this. But essentially socializers, what they do is their whole thing is making people feel good. Your whole thing is talking to people. So you have lots of friends and when you have lots of friends, again, this actually helps you become famous, right? This actually helps you make wealth because if people like you, they'll give you a job. Even if you don't have skills, if you hang around long enough, you'll meet the right person and you'll become successful. There's a lot of uh, guys in the film industry, YouTube industry that were just charismatic. People like being around them. So they just always bring them around. And these guys made entire careers just by being likable. Same with comedians. They literally make a job out of telling jokes so that people like them. So I think this is like the absolute best one. And I want to say that it only takes a couple months. Like, in my socializer school, I'm able to get you guys amazing results in like 30 to 90 days, but I'm talking about a master level, okay? A master level, that's probably gonna take you a while. So let's say one to two years, all right? And the other issue with being a socializer is if you've gone a long period of time working remote or you started your own business and you're not used to being around others, you're essentially very far behind. 
you're probably several hours per week behind the average person. And if it goes like this for a couple of years, like let's say you haven't talked to girls in two years, three years, you're really behind. And because of this, you have to kind of play catch up. So the idea is I get you on a system where you're now talking to people every single day. I have like challenges, homework and stuff you can do, groups and clubs you can join. We also have weekly Q and A's to practice talking and stuff. But you just level up really fast because you work on it like a skill. Just like you'd go to the gym every day and follow a routine, you could do the same thing with socializing, all right? Now, based on all this, I want you to actually think about which one of these would be best suited towards you, okay? The physical one, not my greatest strength, all right? I have a hard time gaining weight. I drink a lot of coffee. I lose fat super easily. So like, I'm not gonna be this jacked, burly guy. Ironically, I actually used to be a forest firefighter and I lived in the bush and my name is Jack, but again, it's just not my style, right? There's, that's okay. I'm not gonna be a professional tennis player. I could give a fuck about tennis. I could give a fuck about golf, all right? Even though I could probably swing the ball or whatever. Um, it's just not my thing, okay? Skin, hygiene. I get pimples and acne sometimes. I started using some skin products, so I'm trying to work on my skin. But again, that's not my strength, right? I've done what I can. I think that my style when I'm looking to attract girls is different than this. Like this is like a oversized button up. But the point I'm making is like, I've done pretty good physically with what I have, okay? But that's not my main thing. Wealth. I have started making a lot of money in the last couple of months. In fact, 2023 was like my best year. So because of that, now, like I said before, I'm not buying fancy items. I'm not flexing on social media. I'm buying back my time. Each floor of my house has multiple phone chargers, multiple laptop chargers, and standing desks. So no matter where I am in my house, there's a desk, there's a charger, there's a mouse, Everything is there. I just bring my laptop, sit down, boom, I can work. I have standing desks so that I don't hurt my lower back. I bought a gym set for my basement so I can do squats, bench, free weights, whenever I want, I don't have to go to the gym. You know, the next thing I'm probably gonna do is get a sauna. And the idea here is that I'm buying back my time. I have all this stuff here, so I save that time. And in addition to this, I can travel. I recently went to Bali for a month just because I felt like it. Had a blast, met a bunch of people. And the reason I did that is because I have wealth. I have money coming in, okay? This is really useful, especially if you're also a social media content creator because you do cool stuff, you take photos of that, and then you put that online, and this helps with your status, which is another way of saying fame, right? Now, when you're famous, all of a sudden, everybody knows who you are, especially in your niche, right? I don't know how many of you guys know Sam Ovens, but Sam Ovens, to me, is super famous. I think that guy's super recognizable. He's dope. There's also certain authors I like. There's also certain musicians I like. And to other people, they might not be famous, but to me, they are. So for example, think about the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. He's like a 65-year-old man. He's got a beard. He's kind of chubby and fat. But I am not fucking lying to you, bro. I bet there are at least a thousand girls that are hot as fuck that would suck his dick, have sex with him, and date him, okay? There are plenty of examples of successful men that wrote a cool book, or they were an actor in some TV show, or they made like a number one hit single 20 years ago, and they're still successful getting girls because they're famous, okay? So this one is like the longest dividend possible, all right? Next one is clever. This, like I said, is for you engineers and unique guys. You just look at everything like it's an equation, like a formula, you kind of follow it strategically, right? You just think about it and you draw a diagram, you create like a thesis and you're like, okay, this is what I'll do and you execute enough, and then after one to two months, you're good. So, you know, I highly recommend my program for you guys that are smart, because this is like probably your best bet. And the next is just socializing. This is my favorite because you feel good as you do it. Whenever you hang out with friends, you feel good. Whenever you spend time with your family, you feel good. But the entire time you're with other people, you're socializing. So when I was doing YouTube pranks, and I had to go and talk to strangers all day, I actually started to rewire my dopamine system so that I enjoyed talking to strangers. So I would literally go out, talk to like 50 strangers per day. A lot of them were girls, a lot of them were guys. And I got so good at it that I actually enjoyed it. So now when I would wake up and I didn't talk to anybody, I'd be in a bad mood. So I got addicted to leveling up my social skills, if that makes sense. So that's why Socializer is the best. Because again, if you are in good physical shape, if you are wealthy, if you are famous, and if you are clever, but you can't talk, then it doesn't fucking matter. If you can't socialize, all of the other things are a waste of fucking time, okay? So that is like the five different strategies that you can use. Now, I know that there's gonna be some people saying, well, life isn't about girls and 
you know, blah, 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 blah. I get it, bro. But let's talk about other things in life. When you're in good physical shape, men actually respect you. They go, wow, this guy trains a lot. He's really strong. I'd love to have this guy hanging out with me if I was doing some cool dude shit. Like if I needed to move stuff at my house or if I wanted to pull up somewhere and look serious as fuck, I'd want to have a couple of my boys that are in good physical shape, right? If I want somebody that also plays sports to be part of my social circle, physical guys are going to be great, right? Makes total sense. Guys that have good fashion sense, you can go out with them and you guys can meet girls together because it's not some scrub wearing a hoodie and Adidas track pants, all right? Wealth. Wealth is also very useful for guys because let's say you want to move to somewhere where everybody surfs or everybody snowboards. Well, with the money you have, you can just go move there, get really good at snowboarding. Then you get respected by others, guys. And you know, again, same with physical, physical, right? If you have a business, you get to meet other business owners. You have the same problems as them. You build relationships with them. You have the same things in common. If you have like a house in a specific neighborhood, you get to meet with all the other house owners. So again, you're seen as legit because you can afford the same things. Wealth is essentially, you know, something that benefits all aspects of life. And yeah, you're going to make friends that are different than your hometown friends, but at least they're going to have the same thing in common with you. You know, a lot of the time guys become wealthy and then all their friends hate on them. Like, oh bro, you changed, money changed you, right? And it's like, dude, I would love for you to be wealthy too. Why aren't you wealthy as well? I want to help you. But you know, crab in the bucket mentality if you're from Ontario, they don't like wealthy people. Next is famous. All the people that you've always wanted to meet, now you can meet them. Because if you're famous, you can talk to other famous people. If you try to message a celebrity on Instagram as like an unknown account, they're probably not going to reply. But if you have a blue check mark, if you have a couple hundred thousand followers, if they've seen your stuff, whether it's music, business advice, comedy stuff, you can actually talk to them and potentially meet up with them. There are a crazy amount of high profile people that I've been able to meet and talk to just because I have a lot of followers on the internet, okay? And that's cool if you could meet your hero. That's cool if there's somebody you really wanna work with. Let's say that you're like a writer and when you grew up, you read all the books by a specific author, you released your own book and then you got to meet the author that inspired that. That's what happens when you're famous, right? In addition to this, you get to meet other people that are like you, they're fun, you can collaborate. All these rappers, they become famous so that they can collaborate with other rappers and they can make the best music for their fans. So being famous is a great thing as well. Next is going to be being clever. When you're smart and you automate your life, you solve the problem as fast and efficiently as possible, which gives you time to do other stuff, okay? Just like I told you guys, I optimize my life setup because I have a home gym, I have a standing desk on each floor, I have phone chargers every square inch of my house so that way no matter where I am, my phone never dies, I can always work, and everything is set up so that I don't have to leave my house if I don't want to, which allows me to do more work. So when you optimize your life, you have more time for things you love, right? Guys, some days I literally record five videos and then I eat food because I pre-ordered it on my food app and the food that I order has already been determined by my dietitian and you know my personal trainer. I have a workout scheduled. So I have an extra three to four hours per day that other people don't just because I'm clever. I set all this up. The other day I drove somewhere and I realized I hadn't actually filled up my gas tank in a little bit over a month because the gym I train at for martial arts, it's like a five minute drive away. And besides that, I have my home gym here. All my food gets delivered. I don't have to spend time doing groceries. Again, being clever, this helps everything in your life, right? I have more time to read comments. I have more time to make videos. I have more time to read books and work on my screenplays and stuff. So being clever helps in all aspects of life. Last but not least, being a socializer. This is great because at the end of the day, as humans, we all want human intimacy. We want to spend time with others. The best way to spend time with others is by making them laugh, making them want to spend time with you, buying them gifts, laughing at their jokes, hanging out, sharing experiences together, telling stories, hanging out with your best friends, your family, okay? Why do we tell jokes? Why do we do things for other people? Because it makes us feel good. And when you're a socializer, that's your job, man. Your job is to make people feel good. And if you're really good at socializing, you could start a personal brand like me. You could literally make a living talking to the camera, bro. Okay. Imagine if you were really interested in movies, you could become a critical drinker. He's this guy that is a big film critic and he has this character he plays that's kind of sarcastic, a bit of an asshole, and he just rips on modern films. The guy makes a full-time living talking about something he loves, films. Okay. 
There's plenty of people that play video games for a living. I'm not saying that you should be a streamer, but you could make a living just being really good at video games. If you're really good at making people laugh, you can get on stage and people buy tickets to come see you. Comedians are making millions of dollars selling out stadiums by going on stage and socializing for an hour. And another good example is me. Whether it's my old channel where I did pranks and social experiments or this channel where I literally just do lectures to the camera, this video isn't even really edited, people watch and I make a living doing this because of my social skills. So this is a great one too. And at the end of the day, guys, a woman might look at you because you look a certain way or because you have a nice boat or a car or you're in like a nice area where only rich people can afford to go to or they've seen you before online or you're just very clever. But none of this matters if you can't socialize, okay? You got the first impression, but now you need to seal the deal. Now you need to be able to talk to them. There are so many girls out there that have seen a guy, they think he's attractive, they're interested in him. But as soon as he opens his mouth, he fucks it all up. Just totally fumbles the bag, all right? So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me another video you'd like to see me make, what topic it would be. If you need help with your dating and your social skills, you can join my free private community called Socializer School. I have six guides in there, okay? I have courses on dating. I have courses on approaching and attracting girls. I have in-field videos of me doing the things that I told you about, like, you know, me actually approaching girls. I got like a wireless mic and my buddy's hanging, like filming behind a bush. So there's like a real interaction there. Break it down step by step. I'm also making a YouTube course. So if you wanna be a socializer and speak to the camera and make a living as a YouTuber, I got that in there as well. And we do live Q and A's each week and there's a community of like, I don't know, we have 250 others in there. So that is fucking dope. You should definitely join that, okay? Socializer School, it's the paid one. And I also have a free community that's for you guys that are just getting started. Maybe you can't afford extra help, that's fine. I have a free community and within that free community, there's a course called Socializer Protocol, complete self-improvement course. It kind of teaches you everything that you see here, right? Like how to get in good physical shape. I have a workout routine for you how to acquire wealth, how to set goals, how to start to turn your passions into a actual business. I also teach you guys how to make friends by socializing, how to have daily socializing activities. Bunch of stuff here and I have all these worksheets you can fill out and print and stick to your wall. That way each day you can tick off all the good things you do, all right? And I am personally invested in your success because I expect you to watch my videos and actually do the things that I teach you. So that's why I've made it as easy as possible. You could spend money to join the paid community, or if you don't have money, you can join the free community that has a free course in it that is an absolute must for beginners. And it will get you all of this because guys, at the end of the day, you watch my videos, so I expect you to take my advice. I expect you to do the things I tell you to because I believe in you. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to represent this channel out in the real world, okay? I don't want Denmo fans to be fucking cockroaches or incels. I want Denmo fans to be absolute chads. And then eventually I want you to tell your friends about my videos and then we can all link up one day. Have a blast, okay? So those are the five strategies and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.